Welcome to this lecture giving a modern approach to Poisson processes. And this approach I have learned from Valentin Schmutz and Eva Lechobach. What are Poisson processes? The basic idea is that you want to generate events. Events are points in time. And the classic way of doing this is that you discretize time in short intervals, delta t, and then you say in each of these short interval, I generate events, I generate a event with a probability pf proportional to the duration delta t and rho zero, where rho zero is a rate and technically called the stochastic intensity. So let's generate events, and this is maybe how it will look like. So what we just did is we called a random number generator in every time step. Let's consider an example. Suppose the total number of time steps is 10 seconds with a resolution of 0.001 second, which is one millisecond. So 10 times 10 seconds times 1000 time steps per second gives a total number of time steps of 10,000. So you would have to call your random number generator 10,000 times. If this stochastic intensity is constant, rho zero, then there's a much more efficient way because we know that the interval between two of these events, the interval has a distribution which is exponential and the factor in front is, um, is rho zero and then this is e to the minus rho zero times s where s is the interval length, an arbitrary interval length s. So rho zero times e to the minus rho zero times uh, s. And so you can directly generate intervals, which you then use to go from one event to the next, and then to the next, and then to the next, to the next, and so forth. This is very efficient because if in total you have 500 events, then you call your random number generator only 500 times. However, a constant row zero is kind of a boring case. Moreover, we may want to consider very short time steps. The more general case is that we have an inhomogeneous Poisson process. And the main difference is that now this stochastic intensity is time dependent. So what can we do in this case? And this is what I will now explain on the right hand side. On the right hand side, I have drawn a two dimensional space. On this horizontal axis, I have time, for example, over here, there might be our 10 seconds, but I added a second dimension and this is a dimension which I call the intensity dimension or rate, which has units one over time. And for example, there might be a maximum up here, which is say 100 Hertz. Now, this two dimensional space is used to generate events. And the idea is that whatever area we choose, so we can choose any area, given this area, the expected number of events is proportional to that area. So let's look at the special area. This is a very small rectangle of size delta rho times delta t. And the area in that rectangle gives the probability that we have an event. Now, we don't have to use rectangles. This would also work for arbitrarily shaped areas. So whatever is the size of the surface of that area gives directly the expected number of events. 
So this is the procedure, and we use now this procedure to consider a rectangular space. There we say the total space, this rectangle is 10 seconds times 100 hertz. So 100 hertz is 100 times unit 1 over second. Multiply with 10 seconds gives 1000. So we know that the expected number of events is 1000. But this number, of course, is Poisson distributed. distributed. So in one trial, in one realization, it might be 857 events. In some other realization, it might be 2,576. So we first pick a number from this Poisson distribution with the correct mean, where the mean is the expected number of events, which is exactly the area. In our case, 1,000. And for that mean, for, we now know the number, we, we draw this realization, we now have a specific realization number, say 57, and then we draw events and put 57 events and put them uniformly across the space. So that in each small area, it's always the same probability that an event could have been generated. But we don't do it per small area. We do it in the whole rectangle. So for each event, we pick first a time, time between 0 and 10 seconds, and then we pick a vertical axis, which corresponds to a rate, and this is where we place this event here. And this means that for each event, we call the random number twice. At the very beginning, we call the random number to decide how many events we have. And then for each of these events, we call the random number generator twice to locate this event in the two-dimensional space. So let us now see how this works. So I've called my red events. And uh, they are uniformly distributed. And at a later stage, I can come in with my stochastic intensity. Now, this stochastic intensity might not even be known at the beginning. Why is that? Because the stochastic depend intensity, rho of t, depends on input, which I call h of t. And this, h, this input might depend on other processes. Imagine a network of spiking neurons where spikes are generated by a Poisson process. I am looking at one of the neurons, that's this neuron here, but this input depends on what's coming from other neurons, and the other neurons are also generated by some process that I don't know at the beginning. So the trick now is I first generated my red points, and then later I can paste in my time-dependent rate or stochastic intensity rho of t. First we generate the points, then we paste in this row of t. And now we project all events below the line to the axis. So all events in this area below the line are projected downward. And all this is done in continuous time. Only much later you may decide to discretize. discretize. Now, let's just consider an example, and let's consider that we have a very small delta t, then the probability that an event would have arrived in this delta t is exactly this surface here, the area under the curve in this small time delta t. And what is this surface? This is rho of t times delta t. But this is exactly what we had in the original procedure of generating spikes. We would go along at each time step, we look at rho of t and multiply by delta t and then decide whether we have an event. This, pro this new procedure gives the same result. Moreover, we can look at an arbitrary uh, longer interval going from t0 to t1. And again, the total area under the curves give 
the expected number of events, which would be rho of t prime d t prime from t0 to t1. Let us now work this out for a specific example. We first generate data points uniformly in two dimensions. In some random order, points will appear on this two-dimensional surface. We now take our time-dependent intensity rho of t and plot it in that space. And then I go from left to right and I project points down to the x-axis. So I take the first point, check it down, project it down, and this is my first event. I take the second point, project it down, third point, project it down, fourth and fifth, and each one of these gives me an event, which I plot down here as a sequence of events or sequence of points or sequence of pulses and uh, in neuroscience these pulses would be called spikes and we can denote this sequence of pulses by a symbol s and uh, s is a function of t and this is a sequence of delta pulses each pulse occurs at a time tf and i sum over the different f's now the red points in this two-dimensional space up here these red points are a first realization of the random process so my sequence of events down here is my first trial or the first pulse train and when i put an index one here at the S, S1 to say it's the first pulse train and all these pulses also get an index one, T1F. And now let's suppose we draw another set of data points and put them down into two dimensional space. And then this other set of data points will again appear here. And now I can do the same thing and say, this is now my second realization and i take the first one of this second realization project it down and this would be my first data point and then i continue for all the other data points and i get my second realization as projecting these data points down and this second realization is then a second sequence of pulses s2 of t which is again a sum over pulses delta pulses t minus t two f so this is my point process that is generated by projecting points down from this two-dimensional plane to the x-axis there's a different interpretation and instead of talking about pulses i can say let's take these pulses and integrate them up so instead of saying here's a pulse and here's the next pulse i say that's the first pulse that's the second pulse so i build a counter and let's do this so i put in a vertical axis here for the counter and uh, then i say we start at zero i have my first pulse i count one i have my second pulse i'm up to two I, then i'm up to three i'm up to four five, six, seven, eight. So what I plot here is my counter, n is the number of counts for the second trial. And obviously this is just the integral of this second realization of pulses and I integrate from zero to t. Therefore, my point process, Poisson process generates points, and this point process in time yields a pulse strain. The pulse strain can be denoted by this symbol 
as a sequence of pulses with a running index f and this is the realization index or trial index k equal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then the same points in time also lead a, uh, give rise to a counting process nk of t which is just the integral of this pulse train. And with this in mind, I can now discuss an important result, and that is about the expectation at time t. So let's ask the following question. I have here a first realization, I have a second realization, I will have a third realization, a fourth realization, and so forth. And what's the expectation at time t? Now, for this count process, the expectation is the expectation over all different realization indices, k, and the expectation by construction is just the integral under this curve. So if I go up to a time big T, time T, then the total, the expected number of points I have under this curve in a given realization is by definition just the integral rho of t dt. Now we see in this formula here under the little two that n is the integral over s and therefore s is the derivative of n. The pulse train is the derivative of the count. Remember down here when I constructed the counting process, every step was caused by one of these pulses. The derivative of the count process are the pulses. And now let's ask the question, what's the expectation of the pulse at time t, s of t? Well, this expectation is then the derivative of this expectation of the count n of t and therefore the result is that I have a formula for the expected number of spikes at time t and this gives that it's just rho of t. So importantly the realization can be generated before the start of any simulation. Realization here means points in two dimensions. We think of the Poisson process normally as a one-dimensional function of time. We create points in two dimensions and the area of any two-dimensional surface gives the expected number of events. The advantage is you do not need to know the time-dependent intensity rho of t beforehand. It can be generated on the fly by interacting uh, interactions between different parts of the network between different Poisson processes that talk to each other. You can analyze complex net networks this way and you can also implement complex networks this way. And the number of actual events in the interval T0, T1 generated by this realization that we generated before is equivalent to the points below the curve. And so formally we can write the expectation in any one of events in any interval between t0 and t1 is points below the curve. So we in integrate, integrate in, the in the vertical direction um, from 0 to rho of t and then we, integral, we integrate uh, over time from t0 to p of t1. And in particular the momentary density of events is rho of t. Now this is expected. What's Nice is that you see that now you can evaluate expectations of delta functions of Dirac deltas. Dirac deltas are objects that have an integral of one but are just points in time and we can talk about expectations of points in time. So I learned this as I said from Valentin Schmutz and uh, Eva Löcherbach and uh, for me, this is a modern approach that has changed my view on Poisson processes.